Hello, I'm Jana, and welcome back to the Crafty Corner. Welcome to round three of Mystery Art Supplies. And by Mystery Art Supplies, I mean absolute mystery. I got a mystery package on my doorstep a couple of days ago, and I did not order those art supplies. So we're gonna dive in and see what we can make with them. And of course, we'll be creating in a traditional vintage distressed Tim Holtz type of style. If you'd like to see exactly which supplies we're going to be using, go ahead and pause here. All right, let's head over to the Crafty Corner. Today, we're going to be having another round of mystery craft supplies. And I've got to say, these supplies that I have today are a real mystery. So pretty recently from Amazon, I got a surprise package. Whoever sent it, all I can say is thank you so much, but it was an anonymous send to me. And I am super excited to experiment with the supplies that came in. Let's take a look at what turned up. So we have got Ohuhu, paint up your inspiration dual tip journal pens. And this is a set of 40. So we've got these lovely water-based markers and look at all those gorgeous colors. That is definitely some colorful inspiration. And if that weren't enough, I was also sent a set of watercolors. I've never heard of these before. This is Geo Region. Not sure the pronunciation on that, but it's a 48 solid watercolor paint set and pigment. And a box, that's pretty darn nice. So let's take a look inside. And it came with some sample water paper, so that's pretty cool. And here we have all of the colors, and it even comes with like a white tube as well. And there's a standard sketching pencil. So we've got all sorts of really neat color options to incorporate today into my traditional Tim Holtz distress type style. So let's set these aside and I'm going to get my substrates ready and an image that we can color in with some of these brand new art supplies. So for our substrate, we're going to be starting with some distress watercolor cardstock and the stencil THS074. Now what I'm going to do is a little bit of a monoprint, but I'm going to pull in a second piece of cardstock so that I can get two backgrounds out of this. So I am going to go textured side up this time. I'm going to put down our stencil and I am going to completely cover this background since I'm going for a repeating pattern. So what we're going to do first is spritz a little bit with water. There we go. Just so everything's going to kind of lay flat. All right, now I'm going to want some jack-o'-lantern and black soot. I'm going to kind of put something over this edge so I don't get any run over. There we go. So we'll just keep things a little bit neater. All right, so spritz with the black soot first. first. Good. And now let's go in with some of the Jack Lantern Distress Mica Spray Stain. Have to give that a really good shake to make sure that everything gets nicely incorporated. Okay, now let's spritz again. Ooh, that is going to look great. All right, that should be plenty. Now we're just going to carefully lift this away. 
and we're going to lift up the stencil and then I'm going to place that onto a second piece of cardstock. There we go. Ooh, that came out really good. I like that. Set that here. Move this off to the side for the moment. Quickly clean up the area. So I'm going to put down another piece of cardstock. There we go. Okay, let's take that. We're going to put this here. Now, with the stencil, I'm going to give this a quick spritz with the water, and I'm also going to clean off the edges that I don't want to have any spray on. So I'm just taking a cloth and wiping away any extra ink in spots that I'm not going to want it. Okay, and right down here. Good. And I'll just bring that down. I've got one more little section to wipe off. Great. So I'll just quickly give this a spritz. And let's put this onto our other piece of watercolor cardstock. So we're aiming to get a lovely monoprint here. Okay. And with the cloth, I'm just going to press that down. Okay, and let's lift and see what we got. Ooh, nice. I like that quite a bit. Great. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to dry this off and then we're going to extend the stencil to cover the rest of the cardstock. Now that everything is dried off, we are going to extend that stencil line. So I'm just going to place the stencil right back on here and we can continue the pattern okay that is good and now we just need to spray so let's go ahead and take our black soot and spritz that on next but i do want to do just a little water first all right spray good and some more of the Distress Mica Spray Stain. And again, this is Jack Lantern. All right, that's good. Let's see how we did. Great, very happy with that. So I'll set this aside and we'll bring back in our other piece. Now I'm going to spritz this again and We'll lay it down to see what we get. But I do need to make sure that I clean off this one section here that does have some inky splatters. I don't need those transferring onto our background. So we'll just carefully wipe that off. And then flip this over. Okay, and a little bit up here. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and carefully line this up. Good. Now I'll just place my cloth on this, press, and let's see how that came out. Mm, not as detailed as I was hoping, but I'm probably going to be trimming this down anyway, so it shouldn't be a very big deal. Okay, let's go ahead and dry our backgrounds off. Oh, wow. When I spritzed that, the lines actually became a bit more noticeable, and I kind of like the wicking that we're getting. All right, be back in a moment after this is all nice and dry. Now we've got two backgrounds. I'm going to set this one aside and save that for a future project, but this one, we're going to alter it a bit more. I've decided this is where we're going to be pulling in our first mystery art supply. So in here, there are all sorts of fantastic colors to play with. And I've decided to go with fall colors. We're going to be using one of the Tim Holtz brushes. And I'm going to be pulling in three of the fall colors. 
But first, I need to do a little test to see exactly what these colors are going to look like and how they're going to play with my traditional Distress palette. So let's try this one right here. Oh, that's... Huh. That's more corally than I thought. That's... I'm getting like abandoned coral vibes with that. Okay, so that one's not going to work. Let's try the deeper red. Whoa, that's really, really pink, huh? Okay, well, this is why we swatch, because sometimes what we see is not necessarily what we get when we're playing with colors. All right, let's see about this one. Wow, that's, again, that's like really, really pink. Huh. That is very misleading. Okay, let's go down here and see how some of these darker colors do. Okay, that's got a possibility. What about this one? Kind of looking like a nice maroon. And that's really bluish. Okay. How about this one? It's kind of got an orangey vibe. Um... Okay, not what I was expecting. All right, back over here. Um, let's try this orange. Ooh, that one is usable. Great, we've got a winner. So that will be one of the colors we will use. Now I want two other colors. I really, really want a red. Maybe that one would work. It's kind of getting more reddish as it dries. Maybe. Let's double check which one that is. Because I like that. Alright, that's that one. Okay. We can do that. It's really weird though. It doesn't look very red, but when it dries it gets redder. So, that's a good thing. And... Ooh, <laughs> now I'm scared to try the yellows. I want a fall yellow, but I'm not sure what we're getting. Let's try this. Okay, that's barely got any color at all. Let's try that again. Um, that's really not yellow. Okay, moving on. Try the next one. There we go, traditional yellow. Okay, so we've got three colors to play with. And my thought is that I'm going to use those colors to fill these in and we'll make kind of like a mosaic pattern could be neat let's see yeah i can just kind of fill that in like that and that should give us a interesting background to play with okay so I think that's going to be the plan. We're going to use the watercolors to fill in this background. So let's go ahead and put this on fast forward and see what we get. So here are the results of watercoloring with the, oh, that's interesting. This has a completely different name on the, okay, here it is, Giro Goin series, watercolors. So initial thoughts are the Colors are really not true to what you're seeing on the block. It's super, super important to color swatch them in order to get the best results. I was super, super surprised when a lot of the reds were like more pink or more bluish. It just it didn't really hold true to what my expectations were in terms of colors looking at the watercolor blocks. But with a bit of color swatching, we came up with a fairly good color combination that fits our fall theme for today. So we're just going to set these aside and move on to the next element in our card, which is going to be some stamping. 
So for stamping, I'm going to be pulling in the Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous set, Floristry CMS 485. And I love this stamp. The flowers are so, so good. And we're going to be stamping out some flowers and we will be doing a sentiment. I think we're going to do best day ever. So let's pull out the sentiment and we'll quickly ink that up. And I'm just going to get this done first so I can set it aside and save the sentiment. Okay, there we go. Just gonna quickly stamp that out. Excellent. And I will grab the trimmer and make sure that this is all set for use. Let's just pop that sentiment right back in. Very good. And tiny atomic trimmer. Take that, grab our sentiment, and we'll be good to go. Great. All right, now for some stamping. So I don't really want the entire thing, but I really like this cluster in the center. See how we've got the three flowers here? And then we've got a bit of foliage going around. I want to do that. So we're only going to ink up part of this. And I'm just going to leave that right on the carrier sheet. So we don't need to do too, too much. Main thing is have enough ink so that we get those interesting parts. And then I can color those in and then cut that out. So right there. Okay, great. So we've got that all set. Now we're going to be coloring with the Ohuhu dual tip journal pens, and these are water-based. I am familiar with the brand Ohuhu, so my expectations for these are much, much higher. So let's go ahead, we're gonna pull in some fall colors, and hopefully everything is going to come out all right. There we go like that that should be a good variety oh my word that is so neon that could be problematic oh boy i do not want to do neon all right well, let's try these and i'm going to kind of just swatch at the edge of the stamp section just to make sure that we're not going to get any surprises okay i like the color that one's in let's try this one yep good yellow how about this orange? Yep, that works beautifully. This might be a little too pink, but I do want to try it. Ooh, that's a bit deeper than I thought. Love it. How about this one? Okay, yes. And I think we've got our color palette. These colors are looking fairly familiar. I'm definitely getting some distressed vibes with these. The colors are very translatable. So if I had to go through and list these by distressed colors, I would say that we've got a barn door, a festa berry, a carved pumpkin, fossilized amber. Um, this is borderline mustard seed or squeezed lemonade. Then we've definitely got a mowed lawn, and this is kind of giving me pie um evergreen bow vibes maybe a little bit of pine tree probably more evergreen bow but either way these are working now if we go by the colors that are who is calling these we've got a deep scarlet vivid red french vermilion deep yellow yellow cream bud green and acid green okay interesting color names so let's go ahead and color these in and that lays down pretty nicely on the paper i am using the distress white heavy stock that seems to be holding up really well to the markers that makes me very happy so we're just kind of going to do a little bit of everything on here. I want that beautiful fall vibe. And we stamped with Distress Black Archival Soot. So we know that our base stamping layer isn't going anywhere. That is a permanent archival ink. 
and that is playing very nicely with the water-based markers so that's a good sign and i'm really really happy about the color palette because it's definitely syncing up with distress which is just the way i like to play with my colors if we get too far away from the distress vibe then i kind of get lost and don't really know what i'm doing so very happy with the colors of these all right let's go ahead and put the rest of this on fast forward and then we'll be able to put our entire card together <laughs> My initial thought for these is that I like them. The colors are really nice and they go down pretty smooth and they played very nicely with the archival ink. So I would call the Ohuhu water-based dual tip markers a win. And I absolutely love the fact that these are dual tipped. It is so fun to have the little nub on this side. And then we also have the larger brush on the second side. So these are great. They definitely are reminding me of the original Distress watercolor markers. Love those, still have a few. Wish we had more of them. But these are reasonable substitute. They won't do all the cool things that Distress does, but the color scheme is great and they lay down nicely. So we are calling these a win. Okay, now let's go ahead and see about assembling our card so we have our focal point we've got our background which i'm going to be turning down because we're going to be layering our background with some paper from ideology we've got this fun rustic background and we're just going to take this and i'll take the tonic tiny trimmer and we'll just cut this down a bit let's see about there should be good and we'll turn that and go this way. All right. Let's see how that works out. Mm, need to take a little bit more off the side. That's okay. We can do that. Now let's see. Okay, there we go. Much happier with that. So we've got that all set. Now, what do I want to do? Ooh, you know what? I recently got my hands on some interesting older ideology and I got these really neat ribbons. Now, where did I stash them? Here they are. So this is an older skew, and this is trimmings. And we've got this really nice gold one in here, so maybe we could incorporate that into this card. Let's see. Oh yeah, I do like that quite a bit. All right, so we are gonna add that in. Just gonna take this, we'll snip a little bit of that. Great, and I'll use a little bit of washi tape to stick it behind the card panel. So I'll just do that, and I'm going to grab a dash of collage medium to run across the front of the panel as well. Okay, and then we'll be able to stick our layers together. So I want to put that right about here. There we go. Got my glue line. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna stick that right here. Ooh, that looks really good, I like it. Very shiny, I do love shiny things. And I'll just take the washi tape that I just happened to have on my desk, stick that there, this is just to hold it down. All right, there we go. 
flip that. That's all nicely lined up. Ooh, that does add something nice. Okay, now I want my ATG tape. We're going to put this on the back of here and then we can have our layers. Okay, and perfect. So just line this up and place. Yeah, I think I'm happy. That's pretty good. All right, just zoom in. Okay, so we're going to be putting this right here. I really want to do something else to anchor that, but what? What would be a good anchor for that? Hmm. I wonder if I have anything embossed laying around. Something embossed would be really useful. Or... Hmm, I need something else because this on top of that, it's too busy. I need something a little bit plainer. I'll be right back after I check the scrap bin. So I did find a good scrap and it's embossed. But before we add that to the card, I want to add a dash of unraveled to it just to give it a little bit of shine. So I'm just going to scribble this right on here. Smudge that out. Oh, perfect. That is just the right amount of shine. Great. And now I can take some foam squares and put them right on the back here. Let's see here. Oh. One, two, three, four, and Oh, these foam squares are very sticky today. Okay, so let's get rid of those backings. Great. And we can take that, put this right here. Oh, it's going to look good. Okay. Am I lined up? That doesn't look lined up. Let's try that again. There we go, that's lined up. And now we can take this and add that on. Need a few more of these squares. One, two, three. Great. And we'll take this and, hmm, I don't wanna place that. I think like that, that's good. Now I do have some extra little bits and pieces laying around from last week's fall card. I was thinking maybe I can incorporate a few things into this. Let's see. I like that. Ooh. Yeah. That is going to be perfect. And maybe a sprig of something here. Ooh. That's working out even better than I thought. Nice. And if I can just kind of poke that in there yeah this is working out really well i love using leftovers Ooh, like that and great i've got another one of these i could put that right there oh, i have a leaf stuck here i don't need that put that there and Hmm, what do I want? I think that is going to be good. I don't know, do I want another flower in here? Maybe, yeah. Ooh, you know what, I'm gonna switch this for that. There we go, ooh, that balance is so much better. And I'll put this gold piece over here. And I've got the... I kind of want another flower. Ooh, that orange one. No, that doesn't really match. How about... You know what? I think just that is going to work. So now let's go ahead and glue these pieces in. And then we can finish up with our sentiment. Great. 
I'm always helpful when I can use up bits and pieces from other projects. And even more fun, die cutting a ton of scraps to get rid of things in the scrap bin. And then actually being able to use them on cards is also a wonderful thing. Okay, let's take this. A little bit of glue. Great. That should be good. Now let's go over here. Need more glue. A little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit on the stem. And we'll just sneak that in right here. Good. Now for that orange leafy piece. Okay. And let's tuck that right under here. Ooh, that is really giving me fall vibes. I'm loving the colors and it was definitely an adventure to try to incorporate some non-distress products. Always a challenge, but it's fun to find things that play well with the other things that I already know and love oh so well. There we go. Okay, last but not least, we need our sentiment. And for the sentiment, I believe I'm going to grab a bit of ink to darken that piece up. So I've got a little bit of scorched timber. That will be a good one to put over the top. So I'm just going to do direct to paper. Normally not my thing, but why not? It works. Ooh, that darkened it quite a bit, but that's okay. I think we'll be fine. You can always lighten that up with a bit of water. There we go. Excellent. Just blot that a little bit. Perfect. And just wipe that up. Move our scraps. There. And let's add that sentiment. Put that right here. Hmm, do I like that there? Or do I like that centered? I think I like it centered. That works. Today we had round three of our mystery art supplies and today's supplies were an absolute mystery because I had no idea what was in the box when it arrived on my doorstep, but it was so much fun trying to combine different art supplies into our traditional distress Tim Holtz vibe. We've experimented with watercolors and water-based markers to integrate them in with some traditional Tim Holtz stamps, stencils, and pieces from Ideology. I hope that you've had fun today with me creating this fall-themed card. And until next time, happy crafting!